uh, verifying that you are in fact a developer, that you have an account, and again, reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to set you with something like BizSpark or DreamSpark to help uh, waive some of these costs and make your barrier to entry as low as possible. Okay. Yeah. Now you're signed Preparing in. Preparing the solution. It's going to ask me if I want to target to Windows 8.1. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now. It is really easy to do later on uh, simply by right-clicking on the project right. and saying retarget to Windows 8.1. So if you kind of mess up and go, oh, man, I really wanted to, re I really wanted to target 8.1, but I don't feel like re-exporting, you can go ahead and, and do it from here. Okay. Uh, one thing I do want to note that I forgot on the first demo was uh, every subsequent time you export from Unity now, mm -hmm. after you have the first Visual Studio solution export, um, let's say I need to go back and I need to make some changes to my level. Okay. You know, maybe I, I need to reposition something, add some new objects, add some new scenes, right? Change my scripts. Anything I do in Unity, uh, when it goes and re-export, it's actually just going to change this data folder. Right. So it's not going to touch the rest of my Visual Studio solution. It's going to leave it all alone so that any changes you make, let's say in your, your manifest file or your main page, Maybe you've got some custom elements in your main, main page XAML. Maybe mm -hmm. you've got uh, a Microsoft ad control in there. Um, Unity's not going to touch that. It's just going to update this data folder for you. So um, Windows Store apps, one thing to be careful of is that it is going to export to ARM-based architecture by default. So essentially tablets. So that would be, yeah, like a Windows RT tablet. Right. Uh, if you plan on debugging on a Windows machine that's x86, x84, or sec yes. x64, um, you're going to have to come in here and change it to x86. So here is the configuration manager next to the debug right. button. Yep. So yeah, this I, threw me off my first time as well. Yeah, it it gets it still gets me to this day. Yeah. Um, you know, because I'm expecting to just export it out and run it and go, um, but now I've kind of got this in my workflow. If I go to the debug drop down here, configuration manager. I'm going to change the active solution platform to right. x86. So you only have to do this one time, essentially. It's the first time you build that right. project. Right. Uh, now, another note here is if I'm getting ready to publish my application, mm -hmm. and I'm going to upload it to the store, or I'm going to send it to some of my friends to test it out, I want to build it in the master Correct. build configuration. It's not, in fact, release, which is what you're yeah. generally used to. Yeah, you notice we've got release and debug which are, those are the standard Visual Studio um, configurations. Uh, Unity has added this new level called Master uh, that removes absolutely all debug profiling hooks right. from the app. And so I've can... seen frame rate drop. Absolutely. Release, right? So super important to, to remember that little tip. Yeah, you're removing profilers, right removing um, any console.logs, things like that. Yeah, and so like if you're testing your game on a phone yep. and the, the frames per second's down, you know, in the 20s and you're like, what's going on? Yeah. Just go back to Visual Studio and double check and make sure that you've got the master uh, configuration. Right, so you're not actually in debug yeah. mode. Right. All right, so the next demo. Actually, let's talk about universal apps real quick. Okay. All right, so as we mentioned before, Universal Apps, uh, something that we announced this year as part of a, our effort, ongoing effort to combine platforms. Yeah. Uh, so we've got the solution now where we can export one single Visual Studio solution for Windows Store and Windows Phone. And they do some really cool code sharing between the platforms. Uh, it makes for nice um, code updates, code changes, easy code changes. Right. And Unity's taking advantage of it now. And you can export to Universal Apps. Uh, it, again, it does require Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1 targeting those yes. devices for Universal Apps. And so I'm going to show you how easy that is to export. Again. So really, it's the same data model that we're keeping, so the same information. And the only thing you may ever have to change on your Universal App uh, would be perhaps the, the, the front end or the visuals that a person sees when, when loading an application. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to change my SDK type to Universal 8.1. Okay. Right? And I'm simply going to do build again. I'm going to create a new folder for this one called Universal. If I can type. It's getting late in the day. That happens to the best of us. It's certainly coffee time. Yeah. I can tell you that. Well, we are in Redmond. Yeah. So it's amazing to see how much easier it is to actually develop games uh, at this point where you can literally drag and drop and, and hit a button to deploy to a specific platform. When you think about how much oh, it's different fantastic. and yeah. more difficult it was years yeah. ago in the C++ It's incredible. Uh, and 
Unity is making it easier and easier yeah. with each release, it seems. Uh, I mean, I, I started playing around with Unity about six years ago, and to see the evolution over time of how, one, how many platforms it's targeting is amazing. Yep. Um, you know, when I first started looking at it, it was Mac and PC only. Yeah. And now, what I think there's 16 different platforms yeah. that you can target with Unity, which is phenomenal. Uh, and as a, a game developer myself, I want to be on all platforms I can that makes sense for my game, so that I'm maximi you know, maximizing my revenue, my install base, yep. all that stuff. So again, here we see we've got um, the same style solution that's uh, going to be set up for universal apps. Hope you have a beast of a machine over there because you've got three instances of Visual Studio running at once, and yeah. uh, and Unity. Look, this folder structure looks a little bit different, so why don't you walk yeah. us through this real quick? So let's take a look at this, and we'll zoom in here a little bit um, so we can see the structure. So we, we now we've got a couple different things going on here. We've got this shared project, and in it you'll see that our main page and our app.xaml are there now. Mm -hmm. But our data folder is there now, too. Right. Unity, right? So that means that Unity is exporting essentially shared code for each platform. Yes, the same, same Unity project, as it were. Right. And so now I've got a Windows 8.1 project. So okay. this is going to target those Windows Store platforms that we talked about. All right, whether it's ARM tablets, tablets or the PCs, desktop. right? The touch, touch computers. Uh, and then we've got a Windows Phone 8.1 project here. And these are going to be the phone projects. And now it's going to have um, the main data folder, right? It's going to have a data folder for each specific platform. Right. Uh, you know, and anything that needs to be built for that platform. You see these manage assemblies.txt. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the platform specific assets. Okay, so those required, things like right? uh, store images, live tiles, things like that. Exactly. And then, you know, each platform is going to have a, a different manifest for uploading to the store. Right, basically a configuration file. Mm -hmm. um, these are those uh, script assemblies that I was talking about that it generated out. So if you're using Unity VS and you've got the plugin installed, right. you can manage it all from one single instance of Visual Studio, which is great. Exactly. And you can attach and debug from this. And again, uh, if I export, it's only going to export and change the data folder from Unity from here on out. Easy enough. I like it. So it's actually, let's... You want to run one of these things? Yeah, I want to yeah. see this. We've been talking. Let's uh, let's yeah. actually put up some of this work. All right. Well, I'm gonna I just hit debug, and I want to do this. I did this on purpose. I forgot to change it from ARM oh, to x86. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Threw all kinds of errors down right? there. This is what we were talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah. If you don't go and change, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna go to configuration manager. Um, I got all this uh, spew down here in the the console. It did not like that. All right. So. Oh, it couldn't find all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's because it's on the wrong platform. It's looking for ARM. All right, so I've got that changed. I'm going to run local machine. Here you see Again. building all of our scripts. Oh, did I change it? I did. Hmm. Okay. What did Carl do before? <laughs> yeah, you may have to clean Let's that do solution. A clean, build. Oh, my goodness. It's missing something. Yeah. Well, it's got this uh, this crazy Ellipsis. dot underscore. Oh, yeah. I actually saw someone with that problem several weeks ago. So, you know, do you want to try the Windows 8 project? See how that deployed? Yeah, let's see what's going on. Because we were building Windows. somebody else's project on the fly. <laughs> so let's see how this worked out. Did Carl miss something earlier? That's a risky venture, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Carl may have missed something earlier. Again, okay. the joys of doing a live tech demo. Yeah, for the sake of... Uh, Moving on here. So we don't have uh, Adam's original project, but perhaps we'll have more time to show that off tomorrow. But again, we're building uh, Carl's Unity project, so he may have uh, left out a script or two along the way. So I'll take an opportunity to uh, kind of build through that later on. I'm but, just going to create a new project here. Okay. In the meantime, you're going to put together a new project for us? Real fast. All right. Test my, my live coding skills. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to create a cube. Okay, there's a fancy cube. That is a nice camera. Cube. I'm going to uh, add a light to the scene so that it's lit. All right. Uh, okay. Maybe do some uh, translation on the cube to make it a little more interesting. I like it. All right. Okay. 
between you and Adam, I mean, I don't know who's making better cubes today. I don't know. I, my mind's pretty good. Save my scene. Okay. So every new scene, you're going to add this scene to your actual build, right? Yep. So there's our asset. There it is. One, scene one. All right, let's export to Windows again. We have our C sharp solution. Starting Windows 8. Let's see how this takes off. Again, it's always smart to stay organized with these things. So that's why you see uh, Jason has a build folder for all of his project builds. Yeah, I just kind of made a habit of it now. Yeah, yeah, so do I. Um, I typically I try to put my scenes, animations, everything. And it's something that I've seen other people do in demos, right? Um, it just seems like a good idea to organize. Uh, I, I could, I've seen some of these projects pretty get pretty ungainly over time as you yeah. pull them out. So I'm going to check my build configuration. Here we go. Debug local machine. Okay, here comes our new project. Building, right, building, so building, got, and there we go. All right. This, uh, thank you, help, for telling me that I can switch between apps. <laughs> the slide to the side. And there's, there's our scene there. Oh, so, I like that. Look at that lighting. Yeah. Woo! So that's a, our fancy cube. I put a little abstract on it. I yeah. tilted it. I don't think Adam did that. I'm I can nice. tell you're trying to go for that little Unity logo there. Very nice. So there it is, our app. So, evidence that it does run on the Windows platform. Perfect. Okay, so with that in mind, we have our exporting to Windows Phone, Windows 8, and then Universal Apps. So uh, why don't you tell us and a bit about... Running. Let's yeah. let's talk about running Windows Phone real quick. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Try We've got time. Make sure it proves. We do have time. So I'm going to switch back to Windows Phone, and I'm going to do that again. The proof is in the pudding, as they say, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so we saw how easy it was to make that nice, beautiful cube scene. Mm -hmm. I'd like that lighting, though. <laughs> So let's see how it comes out on Windows Phone. And uh, for Windows Phone, there are actually two ways of testing this, right? I mean, we can use it in the simulator. Yeah, so we're going to use the yeah we're going to use the phone emulator. Yep. And then um, I'm going to get I can connect my 1520. Okay, your choice. Right to the machine, and we can run that, and we'll get a nice camera shot of uh, of doing that. But I want to do the emulator first. Okay. Let's make sure it runs. Building, building, building. So the emulator is actually running something called Hyper V. So that's virtualization. Uh, and Microsoft technology that allows us to basically uh, emulate having a phone running on your computer. So all the touch inputs are there. So if you have a touch screen, um, you can actually touch um, your screen and it'll interact with the phone screen. Or if you have a mouse, you can then click and you can see round points throughout the, uh, the application to see um, where you're actually touching. You even have a multi-gesture support. Mm -hmm. So you can hit that button there and it'll make it seem as though you're touching with two, three, or multiple fingers at once. So here we go, we're really loading our application. I noticed before you had different options for the simulator there. Can you explain that for us real quick? Yeah, so we have our different device configurations, right? So you can see here in the background that I'm uh, targeting a, a Windows 28.1 with a four inch screen and 512 megabytes of RAM. Okay. That's a very common configuration in the field in our install base uh, in those emerging markets we talked about earlier, right? right? Um, these are those low memory devices uh, that you definitely want to try to target if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's our cube. Uh, I rather like it in landscape mode. Yeah, and again, you can lock it to landscape mode in the app manifest, right. just to be clear. Yep, uh, we do have a little debug screen up here for our, our frame counter. Yeah, frame counter, so fill rate, second things rate. like that. Look at that, we got, what, 66 frames per second? I like it. 1080p. Beautiful. That's better than the next-gen consoles, right? Yeah. Um, I can also debug this on a, a device. Okay. I'm trying to let me hook this up. So you can plug in your, your actual phone you walk around and carry in your pocket every day. Yeah, and once you uh, register for your developer account, yes, and you have a Windows Phone device, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll tell you a couple of ways that you can maybe get one uh, if you're developing a, a great game. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, they have some pretty cheap options with the 520 series uh, Absolutely. for less than $100. But again, you can um, reach out to your local evangelist and see how they could potentially get you um, hardware for you or your company to test on as well. Um, so I'm going to run this. Okay, so it looks like we have your phone connected at yep. this point. 
Let's see what happens here. So from it's Visual Studio, it's connected okay. via it's USB start. to your phone. We see Unity's launching, and there we go. Yeah, there's my cube. All right, you still have all the same D 